Let's take a moment to talk about Uplock. So many people using smartphones these days, everybody has this in the pocket. Having an Uplock will be quite essential. So imagine use case scenarios, you are handing over your phone to a colleague, you want this colleague not to sneak peek and be able to just open your gallery and then maybe check whatever you're doing. You know, you know what you're doing. Or you have kids, you don't want them to access TikTok, for example, like short form content and little kids is not a good combination. So one might expect that the uplock is an integral feature of almost every phone, at least Android phones. But this is not the case with Samsung phones and with Pixel phones. Hold your horses. I know, I know there are things like the Samsung Secure folder you can apparently use to set up some things that are quite like Uplock, but it will actually clone the application that you want to lock into another version and of course then use also Nox to encrypt it, which is just beautiful and perfect, but do you want to do this with your gallery? Do you want to do this with Telegram or Facebook? You can see here how it's not very simple and also not very efficient. Now, I also read to the internet and it seems that this topic confuses people a lot. Just let's see what happens here. Samsung has a lot of useless feature, but no native uplock. Some people, of course, directly saying, hey, you know, there is the secure folder, you can do this. But then some people are saying that secure folder is not as useful as uplock, as uplock lets you really use the same daily app that you have. So no dual installation, no duplicate app, safe storage. And of course, it's just so easy. But it isn't only Samsung that doesn't have currently an uplock because yes, there were some things before that existed that allow you to do so. I'm gonna demonstrate in a while. There are other brands too, like the Google Pixel. Some other people, like this person here, using a variety of phones, Xiaomi and Huawei and Honor and OnePlus, the moment they switched from OnePlus to Pixel, they're really surprised. Yeah, there is no uplock. And although a native uplock doesn't exist in One UI 6, but most probably there are hints that we're gonna see this feature coming back in One UI 7. Google had a problem with this since forever. Like, see here, how do I lock an app access on Pixel 7 Pro, which is already a very old device? Well, no, <laughs> there is no option. And when there are no options, you're either left with not being able to do this or you have to go and use a third party app and with third party app there comes great responsibility i'm going to show you one working solution that i believe can do the work but i also want to draw your attention to things that i've discovered there are these apps that were delivering this functionality like this one app locker no longer on the play store okay even semantic norton lock was discontinued a few months ago so they just said listen we're done we're not going to provide this Right, so boom lock up is the same story. So a lot of these app quietly are just removed from the Play Store or maybe made obsolete by their owners for various of reasons. So it is a very interesting story to see what the hell is happening with this thing. And this discussion with app locking isn't new. Like for example, how do I do it on the S24 Ultra? People had this question since forever. And remember, I told you in the beginning, I'm gonna show you what Samsung used to have that is sadly not working anymore since Android 9. And I'm also going to show you two solutions. Because remember, using a third party app for something that should have been a core stock functionality is a compromise on battery life, on security, on everything else. And I'm gonna show you guys. So let's buckle up and start this video. Today's video proudly sponsored by Lidl. Eat fresh fruits and yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> I bought this myself. Okay guys, so I promised to give you the whole story. Two, three years ago, S Secure, all right. The latest version, I think from around some years ago, this was for sure a Samsung stock default app that will allow you to lock and mask apps. Because remember, locking up is one thing and masking apps is changing your calendar icon to let's say a Spotify icon or changing um, another app icon to maybe the weather. This thing sadly doesn't work. So for some reason, Samsung decided to depreciate it. So it's no longer working and it's a sad story. So this thing is pretty much useful. I'm just gonna uninstall it. <laughs> and of course I have a protection. But you guys, for a moment, think about something. If we don't have a way to lock an application, you know, via stock settings, right? What will be the other solution provided that it's stock? Well, it's not a best solution, but yeah, you can still do something called pinup, right? And an application pinned on one UI means, yep, you can give your annoying colleague your phone and just make sure that he's gonna watch the gallery, but you know, he's not gonna be able to just go outside. He's not gonna be able to make anything, like even not access your quick setting. And pinning an app is actually quite useful because you can just go 
hit here, pin this up, give it to your kid, and that's it, guys. You know, your kid is not gonna be able to access your gallery. Nothing else will be accessible on your phone. The only way to unpin it is just swipe to go outside of it, and then, of course, just unpin it. Where is this found? Go inside settings. Under security and privacy, there is something called pinup, and by default, it's not turned on. You have to turn it on and also make sure ask for pin before unpinning, else just a swipe will <laughs> unpin your application. But again, this is just a workaround. So what about third party app logger apps? And as I said in the beginning, every time you use something like a third party app for something that might have been a stock functionality will of course be a compromise. Now, there is this app that I've tested, it's called AppLock. By the way, so far it has been working great. And why do I say that these apps are compromised? Well, we need to understand how this app works. And for this, I'm just going to uninstall the application, right? And I'm going to install it together with you so that you see what I mean. This is the application that I've tested. I'm just going to install it. I just want you to see you know how it's been set up and this will make a point on how and why it's a compromise so welcome to uplock very nice interface set unlock pattern so let's use this one here all right and right now i'm in the interface and i can select which of the apps i want to have locked so let's say i'm going to lock the gallery so i press lock and this is the first compromise as we need to grant certain permissions for the app to be able to operate the first thing isn't that critical we need to display over other apps but then we do have also usage access allow app lock to detect if a locked app is launched so let me just grant the first one here we are all right and then guys i need to also grant usage access okay so again this is the second permission that we are giving in the app has a very nice interface it will guide you on what you have to do and then guys there is another permission protected apps protect your apps in the background so when you click this one stop optimizing the battery usage which means that the app lock is going to be able to run in the background and its battery usage won't be restricted which is of course normal if you want to use the services of this app but then of course it's going to also consume your battery and of course it also wants to have access to your notification I'm going to demonstrate right now. I'm going to try to open the gallery and the app lock will start and I have to put here my pattern. Now, first thing on your mind, yeah, pattern, lame. You can go inside the settings and you can change this to fingerprint unlock, which is good because right now I'm going to close everything. I'm going to start the gallery. Boom. And now finger lock. Now, guys, this solution isn't perfect. Let me tell you why. Let me close everything. So I'm going to start the gallery. It will require me to use my finger to unlock it. But the moment I go to the recent menu, right? See, the moment I go to the recent menu, I'm still able to see at least the last pictures or the last photos, which isn't great. I've read online people trying this with their kids and the kids always found a way to just go inside the system settings and disable the app and just bypass this protection. This app has something called enable uninstall protection to prevent locking from failing. So thing is to enable this feature you should grant device admin access to the app and this is something that i usually do only with work related stuff i mean this is really serious so activating this admin app will allow app lock to perform the following actions <laughs> and yeah no actions there but you can imagine let's say the kid will try directly to uninstall it no they're not going to be able. So prevent uninstall and you need to enter permissions. So let's say that someone is playing clever. They go inside the app lock. They try to hit here. Yeah, and here is the set story, guys. This admin app is active and allows app lock to perform the following action. So if I now deactivate the admin app, I'm going to be able to also deinstall the application. So this thing will work with users that are not so much experienced. Now let me show you how it's actually helpful. I can lock a Spotify or any app by the way, it's a good idea to always set a recovery email so that if you forget your button, right, you can try to recover it. So right now, if somebody really wants to deinstall Spotify, boom, not able to do so. And I'm going to try to do this also from the app section. So I'm going to hit apps. I'm going to go there. I'm going to try to find Spotify. I'm going to try to deinstall Spotify from here. See, so at least you have some basic protection but here is the thing with the third party app lockers right so first a power user 
can easily deactivate them. Second, even if you're not a power user, right, still they're not going to be perfect. Like this case, when I go in my recent menu, I can at least access some of the content. Third, they're going to consume your battery. Fourth, you'll have to give them a lot of permission. And by a lot, I mean really a lot. So this is why, according to me, the best solution is to have such core functionalities integrated into stock. Let me know, guys, what you think down below in the comments. And if you want to pin an application, then yeah, you're more than welcome to do so. This is right now what I'll be doing with my kids, clicking here, boom, pin this up. So I am not using a native app lock because it doesn't exist. Also, I don't really like secure folder for locking apps, but then I can at least give the phone to my kids and they'll be only able to access the app that I gave to them. And again, it's not perfect. We have to wait for One UI 7, where hopefully Samsung will decide to bring this back. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you have found this video helpful, you know what to do. Stay safe, VST, over, and bye.